Welcome to another episode of the Freedom Filled Life. Joe's busy this week doing some other things, so you have just me. And we're here at the Space Center in Hunts Huntsville, Alabama. I've been to the one in Cape Canaveral, but I've never been to the one here in Huntsville. So let's go in and see what all they have to show us. General Emission to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center is $30. To the planetarium is an additional $12 per adult. And then there are several other experiences that you can add on above that. Space Gray is a journey through pop culture. There's all kinds of toys dealing with space. I definitely recognize that one. Suits from over the years. This is the various space suits that different teams have worn. CubeSats. What are CubeSats? Small spacecraft often used to conduct scientific investigation and observations. Here's the rocket ship you can see from the interstate. This thing is huge. Looks like you used to be able to walk out under it, but they've got that closed right now. NASA Saturn 1. Saturn 1 is the first American launch vehicle developed solely for space exploration. Taller than a 16-story building, the Saturn 1 launched 10 tons of payload into Earth orbit, the first static tested in Huntsville in May of 1961. That is the Saturn V rocket. So, the first scheduled Apollo flight. Looks like that was flight seven. Maybe. This was restored the confidence of the Apollo program after the disastrous 
fire, Apollo 7 is remembered for carrying the first three men into space. So that was Apollo 7. Looks like this is Apollo 10. And 9. Apollos 9 and 10. Apollo 11. This was the one where they actually landed on the moon. Apollo 12. The second time we landed on the moon. Again, we landed on the moon. Remember Apollo 13 is the one that had the explosion and they had to abort. We have Apollo 15, which also landed on the moon. Apollo 16. And then our last moon landing, Apollo 17. Here's an actual Saturn F1 engine. You can see how, just how big this thing is. If you need a reference, you can see how tall I am based on how tall it is. So it's very big. Here's donors that have helped restore some. July 20th, 1969, our lunar landing. This is Apollo 16 command module. This one actually flew to the moon and back. This is what the entryway that the astronauts would walk to board their ship look like. This is part of what the Skylab looks like. Warbler near the control so there's room. There's an exercise. A late, at least in relation to the AOS clock. Uh, no, I have sleep stations. Vanguard. Vanguard tracking ship. See what this does. All right. So. To me, it was a natural extension of becoming a Marine Corps fighter pilot. The naval aviation experience, flying on and off aircraft carriers, and going through test pilot school. These are the skills that you have to start with, but then when you're at NASA, you have to develop and extend those skills on out. Early astronauts spent 80% or more of their time in simulators. 
of it. stage engines.
There's the linear module. There's all kinds of information plates about it. as light as possible. Alabama's early start to aviation. William Lafayette Quick is a vivacious individual, a blacksmith by trade. He is an inventive genius skilled in mechanics. Quick was often inspired by wildlife and nature, watching vultures dip to the earth, then easily pull back into the skies. He made metal notes on their flight patterns, wing structure, gliding controls, and wing steering. He dreamed of manned flights at his home in Newmarket, Alabama. Quick was skilled with his hands and began to assemble a flying machine. Within months after the turn of the 20th century, he and his sons were conducting tests on popular on propeller shapes, main contours, and methods of propulsion. He flew his design in 1908, five years after the Wright brothers. In 1912, Quick applied for a patent for an improved version of this flight machine, featuring retractable landing gear and a steering tail wheel. Ideas that would become integral parts of airplane design years later. That's really cool. Inside here, they're showing a lot of the military uses for not just rockets, but helicopters and other things. Then they've also got this limb module out here showing roughly how large it was. And it's very large. You never know how big these things really are until you see them up close. That is a fairly good sized vehicle. So here's all the details about it. It says it was roughly, just say 23 feet high, 31 feet wide, with the legs extended. 36,000 pounds. This would be the fuel tank and the rockets for one of the space shuttles. Looks like they're building a space shuttle model, a replica over here. All this stuff is still under construction at the moment. I'm assuming you'll be able to walk inside that one. So oh, apparently all this stuff is still under construction, so come back sometime in the future, you'll be able to see what they end up doing with all this. So if you're in the Huntsville, Alabama area, I've definitely come down and visit the U.S. Space Center. It's definitely an interesting visit. Uh, it's amazing how big these vehicles were and how well that they actually transported our people into space. So definitely come give this place a visit, bring your whole family so that the children can learn about our past space adventures. And we welcome you back to another episode of The Freedom Filled Life. So like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.